Okay, wheel choice is a big one that everybody's always asking about. On do I buy a disc wheel? Do I go to 80 mil? Yeah, it's a question that we get like asked all the time. So if we start like if we start off with from rim shapes, like generally you have like what we call like a bog standard box rim, and then these will evolve to like I don't know, there's like 30 mil, 40, you know, it's probably like 42s, 50s, 60s, 80s, and disc wheels. It's, it's mind-boggling, isn't it? Then we've got like tyres as well, which is another story. But uh, when we look at like rims, there's a lot around this. Like number one, it's the interaction of like how it configures in like different bikes. Like a lot of manufacturers now, you might sometimes, their data will show that actually a shallower rim in the front and a bigger, deeper section in the, the rear is gonna work like really well. But when it comes to your own personal choice, you're going out and you're gonna buy a set of wheels, then what do you go for? It's a bit endless, isn't it? What I found is, the, generally speaking, for the majority of people initially is, it's stability. That's the key element. So obviously if we look at an 80 mil rim, in the front, then it's gonna be a lot less stable than like, say like a 30 or a 42 mil. But say if I'm a bigger rider, then I'm going to be able to handle that 80 mil rather than you know somebody that's more petite or uh, a lighter build. So on the front wheel, it's more around like the stability of what you can actually handle. Like a lot of people just you know they'll read like Winston all day to or what the friends have told them. Oh, you need to get a deeper section. But it's, if you if it's chucking you all over the road, then it's not a fast wheel set. Sometimes you can change how it does feel with like different tyres or, or even running like different pressures. But generally speaking, like a mid-range, say like a 60, is gonna handle better than an 80 for, for the majority of like people. The biggest one that we always get asked about is uh, do I buy a disc wheel? And it's a debate that's gone on for like years now. And what I've found from my own personal experience is a lot of it is around the quality of the disc. There's so many out there now, and I've ridden a lot of them. You know, I've worked with different manufacturers to actually work out what is the best layup of like uh, a wheel itself. Talk about like aerodynamics, but acceleration is like a big part. And that, that's the same for like a Fox standard rim, you know, like 42 to, to 80 mil, that actually if you ride in a hilly course, and the shallower rim is going to work better than like a deep section. But it's the same for the disc wheel as well. That uh, if you're carrying, lugging this heavy disc around on like a, a really undulating course, then it, it's probably not going to do you that many favours. But if you've got like a lighter disc wheel, then it's probably just going to act the same. If it might potentially even be quicker. If it's with some of the high standard wheels, then they're a lot stiffer as well. But my own experience is with a disc wheel, you need to almost like get above like 25 miles an hour for that rim to actually uh, accelerate you forward. The only time that I'd say that the disc wheel, if you are a time trialist and you're riding on a dual carriageway, what you generally get is like this inertia, like the traffic will pull you along, uh, which you don't generally get from like a spoke wheel. You know, like the, the car will go by you and then it'll, it'll almost like drag you along like a little bit. But for the majority of like time, sorry, the, for the majority of like triathletes, a deep section is probably gonna be quicker than the disc overall. And a lot of it as well is looking at like tire configurations around like the wheels that you're actually buying. And that's a very complex area. But if you look at like a lot of manufacturers now, they might give you like recommendations uh, on tyres that you, you know like you might want to run but generally speaking that you want to try and get the rim shape whether it's a disc or a, you know like a, a deep section to interact like really well like you don't want it to be wider or or thinner than the, the rim that you're running then you'll get much better interaction 
unless you're going above like 25 miles an hour then you, you know like your deep section is uh, gonna do the job really so if you want to buy this by all means go for it <laughs> demands of the course that you're training for you know like when you look at like the rims that you, you know like if it's hilly then you want to go for a shallower wheel if it's really fast then go for like the most aero setup then uh, providing you feel that you, you know like you've got control over that you know like where it can get really complex is is like crosswinds that's you know like we look at like four spokes and three spokes and then generally speaking like the front wheel is always going to be the one that interacts like a bit weird so if you're getting like a crosswind then i'd definitely go for like a much more shallower wheel what's great nowadays is that rim shapes are actually getting wider as well so what that means is like you look at you know like all the new bikes that we've got like forks are widening rear stays are widening so rim shapes are like getting wider and i think that that's where wheel design is going to go like long term even running like four spokes and three spokes now is what you can find is that they'll give you a lot more control over the bike so a lot of it again is around like the wheels that you've actually brought there's a lot on the market now it's like especially here in the uk it's like endless the ones that you can buy Course profiling is key and wind condition. 